Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran California-based jazz saxophonist Ron Burris. We caught up with him about his newest 2020 CD called Mr. Cool and Man Alive Is It That. This California-born saxophonist started playing in the fourth grade and continued playing through high school. He fell in love with jazz after hearing Gene Ammons and actually met him and has a great story about it. During his 30s, he left music and pursued some other things. But he is back with the release of this debut self-produced CD, and it's full of his writing, arranging, and production skills, and there is much more to come. So please, get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Ron, hey, thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. I love Mr. Cool. I appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's so encouraging to hear that. Let's start off here with Mr. Cool, and I want to know, what was your artistic vision with this album? It's great listening. It's one of those discs you can listen to over and over again. What were you going for? Well, I, I have been playing music, and I wanted to do a CD, hopefully to get known, but it was also personal. Because some of the songs I wrote, like the song Song for Tiny, I wrote that years ago when my daughter was a baby. She was like, she's 40 years old now. <laughs> and House of Sama, I wrote that years ago. And then Mr. Cool, I wrote that for my brother who passed away recently. And so I just wanted to leave a legacy at for my church. I wanted to do the CD for myself personally. And then I also wanted to hopefully get some jazz cats or some promoters or some agents to listen to it and try to get some better jobs like I was I'm still hoping to get at some jazz festivals or break into some uh, you know next SMI. Yeah I don't see any reason why not. So let's go back to your beginnings. I know that you were into Motown. Uh, talk to me about where you were born and raised and kind of how all of these beginnings for you happened. I know you had a sister in the church so kind of talk to me a little bit about your childhood. Yeah, well, I was a young man, well, and, and and sports and music kept me out of trouble, you know, because uh, I played sports, and that was good for me. Then I played music. My mother got me a saxophone. She was seen I was serious. And I said, Mom, I really want this Selma Mark VI. And as a young person, uh, she bought me a Selma Mark VI, and I told her, if you buy this, I'll really practice <laughs> and stay out of trouble. And for the most part, I did. So I played music. I had the opportunity in in um, high school to play with Confunction. They were not called Confunction, and they were called Project Soul. And I played for them, and we were playing in clubs. We were playing all the time. And then when they went on the road, I was a senior, and I decided to go to college. So I went to UC Davis. I majored in music. I got a degree in music, and I taught music in the public schools for about 10 years. And then I kind of got away from music, you know, doing some other things. Uh, I tell people I kind of had a spiritual awakening. But something hit me very strongly where I had to get back into my music and play it again. And so that was the, you know, this CD, Mr. Cool. And I was just hoping, I've had pretty good responses from family and friends, you know, but your family is going to always be nice to you. But when you said you, you, you know, you kind of like to see that made me feel good. <laughs> good, man. Yeah, it should, because I'm really looking forward to getting it on the show. So as far as influences are concerned, Gene Jug Adams was a big influence on you. What was it about him that really made you think, man, this is it. Jazz is the way. You know, Gene Adams, I had the privilege of meeting him because there was this club on Vallejo Street. I, all, I live in Vallejo, and it was Vallejo Street, and it was called Keystone Corner. And a lot of jazz greats went there, and I met Gene Hammonds, and I talked to him, and he was so nice. And, of course, Gene Hammonds has, him and Dexter Gordon have such a beautiful sound on the saxophone, especially the lower notes. And, uh... So he was very moving to me because when he played, everybody in the audience was listening. He could move you because he played so soulfully. And I also heard him play with Sonny Sid, and I got the contrast between Sonny Sid playing a lot of notes. He was playing a few notes, and it, it doesn't matter how many notes you play, but are your notes meaningful? Are your notes melodic? 
Are you swinging? Are you, you know, trying to reach people? So Dean Ammons uh, was my hero, is my hero, along with Stanley Turnton and all, everyone else. But he was the one who really grabbed me because he had such a wonderful sound on the saxophone. Now that you've kind of come back to music, did you always know that you were going to always gravitate back to music, begin in music, and always come back to it? You know, I was listening, and I was, you know, kicking. I would play here and there. But what happened to really get me back into it, my mother had her, I think it was the 80th birthday or something, and she said, Ryan, I want you to play Sugar for me. I said, Mom, do you remember me playing Sugar from by Stan, Stanley Thursday? And she started humming it to me. I said, what? And I said, okay. So I, I, I brought my saxophone. And John Turk, a local musician, who's really, he passed away recently, he was playing, so I said, John, let's play Sugar. And, and uh, he played, and I played it, you know, kind of well. And he looked at me and said, you need to get the rust off that horn. And I said, yeah, I need to play. <laughs> and so then, that was it. I started practicing, and I said, I got to play my music. And formed a group and started playing, and subsequently, made the CD. But my mother, I, I was laughing to myself. I said, I don't think my mother knew I needed to get back into my music. So when she said, Ron, play this song, I think she knew she was going to kind of lead me back. So I kind of laughed. I said, I wonder. So now I'm playing yeah. music with a passion. I'm practicing. I'm trying to write. I'm working on a new CD. I wrote a song entitled uh, Let the Children Dance for My Grandchildren. I'm working on a song uh, titled Sunset, you know, because we walk the waterfront. And then I want to write a couple more originals, but I also want to do sev several cover songs on this next CD. Oh, cool, that's cool. I was going to ask you, if you have a dream tonight and you run into your younger self, say 30 years younger, what advice would you give your younger self? Well, just stay focused, uh, you know, chase your dreams, do what you want to do. Now, I've done different things in life, so I don't regret it because, you know, God has given me several different talents. And all the things I've done, I've done it sincerely. I've done it because I wanted to do it. And those things made me happy. And so I have no regrets. But I would tell students, you know, stay focused on your goals, on what you want to do. And sometimes they change, and you have to set them down. And when you pick them up, like Sonny Rollins uh, had several retirements, but when you pick them up again, it's even a greater appreciation of what you was missing, you know, I think. What is it about jazz you love so much? The, well, the freedom of expression and then also the challenge to play through the core changes and to make those changes but still try to swing and make sense and try to touch people. And I was telling my wife, and I was joking about this one musician, sometimes he had a bad attitude, and I was saying, look, man, we're playing music so we can be happy. <laughs> we're playing music to make people happy. Well, what's with the attitude? And so I play music so I can be happy, and I want to play music to touch people's souls and make them happy, make them smile, make them laugh, make them pat their feet, and in that way, I tell people music is ministry. I'm also an ordained minister and all that stuff. And so I say music is ministry, too. If we can make this world a better place through music, if we can make people happy through music, if we can bring people together, music is wonderful. Yeah. It's a unifier, for sure. Hey, what was one of the first jazz, live jazz shows you ever saw that made you think, man, this is it, this is the way to go? Well, again, when I seen Gene Hammond, that was, it was, uh, that was it for me in person. You know, I'd seen uh, different uh, CDs, videos on, you know, on TV and different things. But when I heard Gene Hammond, and I used to go to the Berkeley Jazz Festival at UC Berkeley and see some of those performances, and that was very moving also. So jazz, although I appreciate all kinds of music, I do appreciate all kinds of music. I love jazz because it's for me, but I do appreciate all kinds of music and all kinds of saxophone. Like, for instance, James Brown's saxophone player, Maceo, he's 
he's just as great to me as John Coltrane or Gene Adams in his own because he's so prolific in his style. He has his style down. He is so great. So he's, he's great too. <laughs> and so yeah. I admire other other people in their own. So long as they're really master their craft. In this reemergence, you have a CD out, and you got one in the works, and you're back into music. What do you want to see happen? What What's left for you to do? What do you really want to get done in the realm of making jazz? I would like to get the opportunity to play at some jazz festivals and get my music heard with a wider audience and if they accept it and I could get at some jazz festivals and, and you know, get a career going where I could play some music. I would love, right, I'm at this point in my life, I would just love to play music if I could. I would hope some jazz uh, agent, booking agent, would, you know, consider my CD and say, hey, I can book you at a couple jazz festivals, you know, and then yeah. get this thing moving. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. So everything's going to come down to this. Everyone has their perception of you, your family, your friends, your fans. But you know yourself best. You're living your life. Who do you think you are? I just want to be a nice guy, like Count Basie said. <laughs> just a nice yeah. guy. And someone that tries to help people and try to play music sincerely. One thing about John Coltrane and Gene Evans and Sonny Sid and some of the greats, they just played sincerely. You know, they just played, you know, it was real. And when you just... Play from the heart, you're going to touch the heart. Yeah. So whatever I do, I just want to play sincere music. And if I play sincere music, somebody out there is going to say, hey, man, I feel that. I hear what you're doing. And when they say that, I'm going to smile. <laughs> well, Ron, I can tell you that I have and I did, and that's exactly why I wanted to talk with you. You have a great story. Your music's wonderful. Keep on keeping on, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out next from you. Hey, man, thank you so much. And I appreciate the uh, interview, and I listen to some of the interviews. They're, they're great. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in California, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Ron for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Jazz.